morning, 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 everybody. Be sure and adjust your volume so uh, you don't scare your uh, sweep mate, office mate, or cubicle mate this morning. It's Monday morning. It's August 4th. I've been away for a couple of weeks, and as you know, uh, going in, it's going to be hard to do 52 of these in a row. So that's uh, we already missed, and that's not a big deal to me. Um, it's a bigger deal to go see family, spend time in Houston and surrounding areas. Fishing, rather than talking about it, going and doing it. So, kick back, enjoy this edition of the Monday Morning Sidewalk. You know, the, the event is actually growing quite a bit. I'm very pleased with the, the number of viewers we have. I'm always looking for uh, for guides to be involved. I don't like to listen to myself that much. So if you're a guide and you want your report on the Monday morning sidewalk, feel free to let me know. Uh, we can move the date for guide reports and, and separate that out like I was talking about and uh, see how that works out. So just keep that in mind. I uh, definitely would like to hear from you guys. Even if you're not a guide, if you've got something to say about fishing where you are, just let me know because Texas is a big state. Very hard to cover it all from right here in North Texas, obviously. Um, since I was out last week, we've had a, uh, another rain event here in Denton and it's raised the lake another 11 inches. So I was out uh, yesterday on a boat with uh, Joel Hayes and we we're actually out sand bass fishing and the lake is kind of, it's hard to identify now because all those landmarks of islands and things are submerged under six feet of water. And that makes things interesting once again, about the time you get something nailed down and figured out for uh, the way things are for the summer, then we get seven feet of rain or seven feet of water in the local lake, Lake Ray Roberts, just north of Denton, Texas. Um, there's a story coming out in the next couple of days, a lot of words. It's about um, a lot of the variables that are involved with fly fishing in salt water. As you know, you know, I fish a lot in salt water whenever I can. And that's one thing that uh, has a lot of variables to it. And you can know them going in or you can not know them. So what I try to do is actually uh, eliminate variables for you and, and bring up the variables you might not have thought of in that story coming up this week. Uh, it might be out as soon as tomorrow. Um, as I said, I was out on Ray Roberts. Uh, things are crazy out there. And, uh, you know, that, that should be true for a lot of these lakes that have gotten water, including uh, Lake Dallas or Louisville, whatever you want to call it. Um, they're still benefiting from water. I'm still seeing runoff a week later, almost a week later here in Denton, Texas, running off south of Ray Roberts and of course into the Louisville Lake. So there may be a chance where um, Louisville gets enough water that, that Ray Roberts can bring its flows even lower and hold on to some of the water they have. I don't know if you looked last week, but I did have a review on, on a Texas Flycaster about the Orvis Helios 2. It's pretty good, you know, pretty good information I think. It's, I'm not the greatest caster in the world, and I tried to vary it up with uh, how I was casting to think of all the styles and all the ways that that, that rod would work. Take a look at that video. It should be right down the list on just below this. Uh, it came out last Friday, August 1st. And let's see what else we've got here. I believe uh, in the next week here in North Texas, according to the Talking Weatherheads, which I am not one, weather conditions are going to be normalizing. We're going to have temperatures finally hitting 100 degrees again. And that combined with the water that I see up in the vegetation and new growth um, as it's working its way up, which is amazing to me. Um, it's going to be a really a, a really good time to get out. If you've never gone out and gone after anything like carp or even bass, they're going to be on the flats too. So this is a good, good time according to what the uh, lakes look like to go out and give it a go. If you need more information, of course, you can look in my, on the Texas Flycaster website on the right-hand side. There's a, search, a Google search box. Just put the term in there for searching the website that you're looking for, and you'll have potentially pages and pages of information on that topic. If you want to search the web, just hit the other Google web search box on my site 
and that will give you a chance to look at things elsewhere. I'm in the process of building a new search engine for, uh, for the internet actually and it's going to be one that searches specific websites and, and specific things related to fly fishing. I'll let you know more about that later. And just a couple more things I just want to mention. Um, I always have a tip to close out the Monday morning sidewalk. This is kind of one that's, that's a little more deep into photography. You know, I'm a professional photographer and I'm a professional writer. And I've got uh, one of those GoPro Hero 3s. And of course, the Hero 3 Plus came out. And what I've heard about that is, put the little tip sign here, tip, tip, tip that the Hero 3 Plus is a lot better in low light situations. It's, it's not a lot different other than that. Um, and apparently um, it's, it's a bit sharper with the lens. But other than that, it's, it's a, everybody that has the 3 Plus says it's a significant upgrade. But at 400 bucks, you know, there's other things you can do that actually cost a lot less money. And one of the things I chose to do was go ahead and and buy an underwater housing for one of my better Nikon cameras. And I want to show you this housing because it's kind of amazing that you can get them so cheap. This is a housing for the Nikon Pro V1. And the, there's a Nikon V1, it's not called Pro, but that doesn't matter. It still fits in this housing. So this is a housing, underwater housing, good to 130 feet. Now the reason I bring this up is if you've got a camera you really like, that's you know a little better than average. You can spend as little as 100, 120 bucks for one of these housings. Use your same camera on the water, underwater. It'll be safe as long as you follow instructions. And these housings, basically, what they do is they give you all the functionality of video and still photos and all that in a camera you're already familiar with the controls on. And I tell you what. The Pro V1 or any of these other cameras are much more reliable in the long run, use less battery and all that than the Heroes, the GoPro Hero system because GoPros are quirky, you got to do software upgrades usually as soon as you get it out of the box and you got to pay close attention to that camera and there's nothing intuitive about their their uh, menus or anything like that and they're small and tiny. I mean I know the convenience of a small and tiny camera and the GoPro, I've got one. But uh, if you want to move up a notch without um, losing all your knowledge on a camera you have, be sure you go to Amazon.com or somewhere like that or B&H Photo out of New York and see what kind of housing they might have for your camera. You'd be really surprised um, that you can take a, a very nice camera and actually get it wet down to 130 feet. So very cool. I used it last week uh, when I was in Galveston and out in the marshes. And speaking of the marshes, you know, things down there on the coast were interesting, but, you know, not that great. I knew going in that it was an opportunity to go fishing. It wasn't an opportunity to go catching because of what I believe are, are some of the variables that, that I'm going to talk about tomorrow. And those variables are tied in, in salooner charts and things like that. Those charts, I was surprised to see, are, are the ones I use are out of the Texas uh, Saltwater Fishing Magazine. And those charts are um, actually there for public consumption. So you got to go to Texas Saltwater Fishing Magazine and look there on their website and you can find those charts which are priceless. Uh, apparently they've changed the way they do them, the way they look, they kind of split them up. I'm still trying to find the original chart. The thing you want to pay attention to on salooner charts are the stars and those big swings in tide. You know, timing of the tide course you'd like it to be during the daytime as far as the swings go but the main thing is you want a nice big swing and a lot of movement in the water from tidal tidal surge which we don't have much surge here but tidal movement anyway hope you have a great week hope you enjoyed another Monday morning sidewalk be sure and peruse the website when you have time and I'll be back on probably with another video this week to talk about some other things more social and, and more um, about uh, access to other websites and things like that and clubs and things as we go on just to give beginners and people who might just be fresh to the sport of fly fishing uh, some ideas on where to find good clean pure uh, unbiased 
and friendly information. Thanks for watching. And if you have any comments or questions, be sure to let me know. You can also text or call me at 940-380-0408 anytime you want.